Welcome to video number one for the eighth module of Assessment for Adult Learning in a Digital Context for the UOIT AEDT program. In this video, we will examine the items you see before you on the screen. So before we begin, take a few moments, pause the video, and consider the following questions. Take a moment to consider these guiding questions. What is a cat? What is its purpose? When is one implemented? And what are some examples? Even though we will look at examples in the next video, try to come up with examples as we go through the first three questions. Keep a list and we'll discuss. Let's look at what we mean by cats. No, we don't mean the feline type, but rather classroom assessment techniques. So a CAT, or Classroom Assessment Technique, is a strategy to collect evidence of student learning, not just at the end of a period of instructional time or summative assessment, but rather CATs are examples of formative assessments. As we go through this, however, consider whether you might use CATs for summative purposes, but implement on a more frequent basis. We'll discuss during the tutorial and we incorporate CATS into our instructional practice so that information and feedback is provided to students and instructors for the purpose of enhancing learning in an ongoing manner rather than waiting until a summative assessment. When to implement. Again, as we discussed in our formative assessment discussion, classroom assessment techniques occur often and throughout the course and at various stages of the instructional experience before or during or after the class. So what are some examples? As we progress through this video and look at characteristics of CATS, please consider what this might look like or sound like and jot down examples or ideas of how to practically implement throughout your instructional practice. The next video will go through some examples, but please pause, review this slide, and jot down ways to implement. A frequently cited resource for instructors within higher education comes from Angelo and Cross. The next few slides will reference their work. Angelo and Cross's notion of classroom assessment techniques are based on seven assumptions. Please pause and review these first four assumptions. Do these reflect your current notions of assessment? Are these in alignment with what we have addressed thus far? Why or why not? Now pause to examine these last three assumptions. Again, does anything surprise you? So what are some of the defining features of CATS? Take a moment to consider this list and try to determine how they may reflect a classroom assessment technique. When you are ready, go ahead to the next slides for an explanation and to see if you are on the right track. Okay. So let's look at the first three characteristics of CATS as described by Thomas Angelo and Patricia Cross. Do you agree or disagree with these characteristics and why? So assessments should be learner-centered and again, ultimately so that student learning can be enhanced. Classroom assessments focus on the learner, not the instructor. Teacher-directed means that the instructor's autonomy and academic freedom and professional judgment should be maintained. Mutually beneficial refers to the active participation of students in the instructional experiences. By participating in classroom assessments, students have opportunities to apply and reinforce learning. By engaging in assessment activities that encourage student self-assessment, Learners have opportunities to become more aware of their own areas of strength and areas for improvement. CATs are also beneficial for instructors because they can then gauge how their students are progressing and they can then adjust for the instructional experiences based on student learning. By implementing CATs on a regular basis, the big three questions, what is it that students will learn or be able to do, what is the evidence of their learning, and what instructional experiences are needed, are continually revisited. Another characteristic of classroom assessment techniques is their formative nature. As previously mentioned, the purpose of CATS is to improve student learning or for students to enhance their learning by getting feedback in an ongoing manner before a summative type of assessment. 
Cats are also based on the needs of students, instructors, and discipline. The assessment may be based on a particular topic addressed during a class, so it is extremely specific to the situation and students. The instructor then needs to also ensure that the assessment is in alignment with the learning objectives and the instructional experience. The instructor's role is to ensure that the assessment is in alignment with the guiding principles of assessment. Another feature of CATS is that classroom assessments are ongoing and provide regular feedback about student learning and are just a part of the instructional process, which leads us to Angelo and Cross's final characteristics of CATS. Classroom assessment techniques are just part of how things are done. The big three questions are consistently implemented and assessment is embedded within the instructional experience, again, to enhance student learning. So here are some questions to consider. Pause and read. So to recap, this video addressed the following items on the screen. We will next look at examples that are hopefully on the list you have developed as you watched this video. Thanks for watching.